Welcome stranger. It's been a while. I've been uh, busy in my shop repairing cameras and I finally found a little time to make a video since this is a uh, kind of a hobby for me. Uh, today we're not going to be looking at cameras. We're going to be looking at lenses. Fungus is a touchy subject. Um, a lot of people are not going to agree with me and they're not going to like my opinion. But uh, people can argue it out on the film forums and decide what they want to do and do what they want to do. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, let's get started. Look at this one here just for something to look at while I'm discussing fungus. I went through my shop looking for um, any lenses that had fungus and I couldn't even find one. That's because I throw most of them out at... Uh, any of them that have fungus, I just toss them. And I'll explain why later. This um, lens right here will be as good as any. Just like I said, we'll have something to look at. Maybe discuss the uh, inspection as we're going along. I started repairing cameras in 78. And when uh, customers brought me in, um, cameras with fungus, I would take the lenses apart, remove the fungus with a solvent and uh, put them back together and the customer would go on his merry way. And it was only years later that um, I discovered a problem. One day I was working on a lens with fungus on it and as I removed the uh, fungus the light caught the glass just at the right angle where I saw a line. I could see where I had removed the fungus and I could see part of the lens that um, I hadn't touched. And I couldn't understand what it was, so I uh, took the uh, lens and got a really powerful uh, loop, 7 power, and had a really close look, and um, I found out what was causing that line, the uh, coating on the lens. When I removed the uh, fungus, I had uh, removed the coating on the lens. And... Uh, all those years that I had been working on lenses removing fungus, I had been removing the coating off the lens and didn't even know it because I just didn't see it. It's very, you have to be aware of it and looking for it. And you have to use a strong magnifier to um, find it. What is this? This is a uh, micro nicor. Lens looks okay. <laughs> no fungus. Well, maybe a little there. I don't know. Can't quite tell. Looking in the monitor, I'd have to get a loop. Anyway, so um, I had a hard decision to make then. On, uh, I knew I couldn't uh, remove the fungus on lenses in the future without removing the coating of the lens also. And... Uh, I decided finally to um, stop taking in lenses with fungus and to um, stop removing it because I was removing the uh, Carl Zeiss, very expensive lens. The, uh, in removing the fungus, I was damaging the customer's lens, even though when he looked at it, he couldn't see that I had removed the lens coating. And uh, he was satisfied, but I was not satisfied because I was, I was not only damaging the lens, I was charging them and giving them back a lens that, um, where the coating was missing. And so uh, that's how that ended. You might ask, well, how important are those lens coatings? Well, these are my college days, and I don't remember much about it, that sort of thing back then. Lens coatings at the time these lenses were being sold was um, a selling point on lenses. They would have magazine ads, full pages, and they would show the uh, lenses and uh, they would arrange the light to where the uh, lenses would turn red and green and blue and they looked beautiful. And they were talking about their lens coatings because that was a selling point at that time was lens coatings. They had got the lenses down right. The lenses looked good. They needed to different, uh, make their lenses look different or better than other companies. 
So lens coatings were the uh, thing of the day. And then in college classes, we discussed a little. I only remember two of them right offhand. And I'll tell you about those two lens coatings now. And we'll go from there. Okay, here's the lens. Light's coming in. There's your film. And the uh, lens is focusing on it. The primary colors, which are, look at my notes, red, yellow, and blue. I should remember that from my art classes. Focus the different points on the uh, film plane without the coating. And uh, throws your focus off just a little bit. I doubt if most people would even notice. But uh, what they do is they uh, put a lens coating on there to make it so where all different primary colors focus at the same point. So that was one. I always had my doubts how useful it was. But it uh, was on the lenses. I don't know if they use things like that today or not. And then the second one, it was important. And I agreed it was important. And I'll show you why on this lens here. When, the, uh, when you're out taking pictures, you should be losing, using a uh, lens hood. Uh, amateurs normally don't. And uh, if they get uh, around to the side and the sun comes in and hits this element at the side like this, and it's shining, let's say it's daytime, very bright, hits this lens, it hits the wall over here. The wall's painted black, but it still lights it up like a flashlight. And so that flashlight effect goes out, uh, hits the opposite wall, and just the light is bouncing around inside the lens like this. And what this causes is your pictures to lose contrast. That's why you want a lens hood on the front here. I should have brought one up here for this uh, video. So the sun can't hit your front element. You never want your sun hitting your front element unless you're looking for that effect, that flare effect. But um, a, uh, if you got uh, blacks in your picture, which are totally black, I don't know if that would be in the zone system, but it'd be zero or one. Been too long, I've forgotten. The... Um, your blacks would start being uh, up to a two or a three. In other words, uh, your picture would look muddy because there were no good blacks in it. A good example might be today's monitors. The uh, cheaper monitors don't have good blacks, and you can really tell it. These new monitors, the OLEDs, are supposed to be totally black, but uh, they're still kind of expensive. So when you're out shooting photographs, you want the same thing. You want total blacks in your black areas. And that's why you uh, need a coating, which is, um, I don't know how the coating works. Maybe it works like a pair of sunglasses that are polarized, but somehow it cuts down on the flare. And also um, on your lenses here, a camera just doesn't, a uh, camera, a lens doesn't have just one lens. It might have, um, could have two or three or four or a dozen different lenses. And as the light goes through each lens, it creates a little bit of flare. And that's multiplied again and again and again as it goes through each lens and gets back to your film plane here to where at the end, the picture that comes in has no blacks. You've got uh, lots of highlights, but uh, your blacks are all muddy, just like a poor quality computer monitor. So the... Um, coating on a lens that prevents uh, you from losing contrast. You can imagine if you've got fungus on there and you remove the fungus and you've removed that coating, then that lens essentially is worthless. You've destroyed it. And that's the reason I stopped uh, removing fungus from lenses. And I'm sure there's um, camera shops out there that will remove fungus that will disagree with me and I, I have no fight with them. It's not important to me. A customer may not, uh, the average customer or amateur might not even notice the difference. But for people who really care about their photographs, you want to make sure that um, all the coatings are on your lens are undamaged. And if you have a lens that has um, fungus on it, you're better off just um, going ahead and tossing it and uh, getting out the lens. Because if you uh, send it to a shop and they remove the fungus, they are going to damage your coatings to one extent or another, and possibly even completely remove them. 
because I've done it and I've seen it and 40 plus years of working on cameras, I know what I'm talking about. And I know some people, like I said, will disagree. It's uh, going to be a touchy subject because there's a lot of lenses out there that uh, they're beautiful, they operate fine, they've got fungus, and so what do you do? Well, like I said, toss them and get another lens. If you want the very best photographs, if you do have the fungus removed from your lens um, and take pictures, you may not even notice the difference. It's going to be slight, but it's going to be there. And it also would counting the shooting conditions on whether the uh, how much uh, flare you're getting. And as far as the colors and focus, uh, the primary colors, I don't think that's so important. But lenses have other coatings that do other things on them. So anyway. That's pretty much my end of my discussion on uh, fo uh, fungus. Um, I know a lot of people will disagree, and that's fine. I won't defend my point. I've stated it. It's here on video, and people can do what they want. Or if they want to, they can run tests, which is the final. But uh, you'd need a densitometer, and you'd have to uh, take pictures before and after. And that would be a lot of work. Okay, that's it. I'm tired. These are videos taking too long. The um, section of the video on fungus uh, took way too long, and uh, there was too much rambling. But I don't like uh, making scripts. These videos are supposed to be fun for me, and uh, scripts are too much work. <laughs> anyway, um, anybody watching it uh, got the point that um, I never see on the forums and nobody ever talks about is that the um, fungus eats into lens coatings. And when you remove the fungus, you remove the uh, lens coating. And um, any uh, camera shop out there, uh, owners are welcome to disagree. Any photographers out there are welcome to disagree. But it's what I've experienced in the past. And... Uh, I suppose one could say to what degree the fungus is uh, spread over the lens that would cause this, but um, I don't make the distinction. If there's fungus in the lens, I just I don't work on it. That's pretty much it. Thanks for dropping by. Until next time. Later.